Energy benchmarking allows you to accomplish three things. It allows you to A, quantify the key performance metrics of a building. The key performance metrics may include gas, water, electricity consumption. And then common units are KWH for electricity, gas is in therms, total energy consumption is generally in KBTU, and then water is in cubic feet. Secondly, benchmarking allows you to compare the energy consumption of buildings of like use. So if I take those key performance metrics and say I divide it by square foot, I get energy use intensity. So if I get the total energy use intensity of a building, it's in KBTU per square foot, I can compare the energy consumption of two different buildings. So one with a 100 score, another with an 80 score. The one with the 80 is generally more efficient with all else being equal. Lastly, uh, benchmarking allows you to track the key performance metric over time. So that while you're investing money in your assets, you want to ensure that you're achieving the goals you outlined, that you're actually reducing energy consumption as well as reducing energy cost. So benchmarking allows you to A, see if you're meeting your goals. If not, take corrective measures to ensure that you do so. So an energy audit, it's a tool. It's a tool used by building owners, managers, that allow them to make a this business decision to determine which energy efficiency measures uh, meet their sustainability goals and their investment return criteria. When, when we're going through an energy audit, um, when it's being reviewed by building owners, the manager, the engineer, as well as your consultant, there's different ways of selecting which projects to implement. The most common one is payback, right? Typically, owners look for uh, items that have the fastest payback period, and which are also within their budget. But another method of evaluating which measures to implement, uh, for, especially for investment real estate owners, is looking at the change in value associated with implementing a particular measure. For example, when you implement a chiller retrofit, you might substantially impact the cost, the energy-related cost of the building. If you reduce your costs, you also increase your net operating income. If you divide that by the capitalization rate of that building, uh, you can significantly increase the value of the asset. So by reducing the energy cost by $100,000 at a building with a 10% cap rate, you're increasing the value of that building by a million dollars. So that oftentimes, the increase in value is actually greater than the cost to install the asset. So when getting an energy audit, it's important to consult with your uh, energy efficiency engineer to help them understand what degree of accuracy you need and what the decision-making criteria is to select the um, recommended energy efficiency projects.